हेलो स्टूडेंट्स ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू स्टूडेंट्स यू आर डूइंग ए वेरी ग्रेट जॉब थैंक्स फॉर इट एंड कीप कंटिन्यूइंग योर स्टडी आई एम वेरी इम्प्रेस ऑन यू यू ऑल आर सेंडिंग होमवर्क टू मी दैट्स वाई अगेन थैंक यू सो मच सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू आई रिविजन ऑफ चैप्टर सिक्स और वी कैन सर चैप्टर वन ऑफ क्लास टेंथ बायोलॉजी और चैप्टर सिक्स ऑफ योर एनसीआईटी बुक दैट इज लाइफ प्रोसेस In my last class, I have told about the heart, how heart pumps the blood to different parts of the body, and what are the organs of different uh, circulatory system. Today we will study about blood vessels. That is also included in circulatory system. Blood vessels are mainly composed of arteries, veins, arteries and veins. Along with we can say as the capillary. so what is their function and where are they present arteries are thick wall tubes thick wall means their wall is thick means their lumen is thick as they carry pure blood and pure blood passes through artery in a great speed and arteries are connected from heart to different parts of the body as it carries pure blood clear so arteries connected to different body parts from heart so it carries blood away from the heart whereas veins are thin wall blood vessels thin wall or we can say that thin wall tubes the vein the lumen of the vein is so thin as it uh, carries or it transports the impure or deoxygenated blood and it brings the blood from body part to the heart here is the difference arteries carries blood away from the heart whereas veins carries blood towards the heart some veins are connected to form the vena cava which is called as large vein veins connected to form vena cava or we can say as large vein clear next is capillaries capillaries are small tubules that present in all along the body they circulate or supply blood means nutrition and oxygen through blood to the smaller parts of the body as we know if we cut our finger or from here or blood is taken for testing the blood where from the blood comes as the veins we can't see in these areas then where the bloods come these bloods are supplied through the capillaries if we try to understand let's uh, give you an interesting example suppose onion is eaten by you that is come to uh, how this onion come to your house your father brought uh, bring that onion from the market again to market where does it come it come from the wholesaler then wholesaler is bring from the um, which we can say go downs or we have stored in large amounts then we know that onion is produced large amount in nasik then the onion is transported to the district wholesaler then they are supplied to retailers then from retailer we buy and then we bring to our home so here the process of transport is means through large transport trucks are used then small vehicles are used till your home it reaches or Uh, smaller vehicles are used exactly the large areas of our body is circulated or transported blood by the help of vena cava or either veins and the smaller parts of our body is supplied by these blood capillaries they have blood capillaries we can say that they are smaller and have high capillarity means they have the pressure of blood is so high clear that's why they are called as capillaries they are small tubule like structure present all along the body that's why when any part of the body get injured or cut then blood comes from that part this is due to capillary so students these are the blood vessels next we will study about blood pressure what is blood pressure which instrument is used to measure blood pressure what is the normal blood pressure what is hypertension etc 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 so the next topic is blood pressure blood pressure means when blood blood flows through the arteries 
then it exerts a pressure against the wall of it so we can write as when blood flows through flows through arteries it exerts a pressure against the wall of it that is called as blood pressure blood pressure is measured by the instrument it is measured by the instrument by the instrument that is called as sphygmomanometer you can see the spellings sphygmo nano meter sphygmo manometer is the instrument which is used to measure blood pressure as we know when we measure the blood pressure through sphygmo manometer its reading taken twice one is called as systolic pressure and another is called diastolic pressure systolic means when pressure is high pressure is high or we can say as contraction diastolic means relaxation <clears throat> if you have ever uh, go to the doctor with your parents then you can see the doctor measures the blood pressure and takes the reading twice one is one takes systolic and one takes diastolic systolic means once the doctor pumps the instrument uh, for many times then it pumps 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 means it will uh, contracts the blood vessel or artery due to which the pressure is high then again it relaxes means again it uh, loses the bottom of the instrument due to which the artery is get relaxed then the doctor watch what is the reading when it contract and when it expand so the normal blood pressure is normal blood pressure is 120 upon 80 mm of hg here hg means mercury as mercury is used in this instrument so we can take hg mm means millimeter 120 upon 80 120 is called as systolic pressure or contracted pressure and 80 is known as diastolic pressure 120 is systolic and 80 is diastolic if the blood pressure exceeds from 120 then it is called as hypertension or high blood pressure so high blood pressure high bp we can say or hypertension what is hypertension when the blood pressure exceeds when the blood pressure or bp exceeds more than 120 then it is high blood pressure due to high blood pressure sometimes we may rupture our blood vessels or uh, we can damage the other blood vessels sometimes the brain get damaged the heart attack may occur as the blood moves very fast due to which the lumen of the arteries is not sufficient to passes the blood in a great speed due to which it get ruptured so students <clears throat> this is all about your blood pressure blood pressure first you have to define it when blood flows to a great pressure then it exerts pressure against the wall of it means against the arteries it is measured by the instrument that is called sphygmo manometer and here mercury is used then its unit is mm of hg then systolic blood pressure is twice measured twice one is systolic and another is diastolic systolic means when the arteries get contracted and diastolic means when the arteries get relaxed or <coughs> expanded so systolic pressure is 120 whereas the diastolic pressure is 80 if the blood pressure exceeds from 120 then it is called high blood pressure or hypertension and if it decreases below 80 then it is called low blood pressure or hypotension we can say it as low blood pressure 
लो बीपी और हाइपर टेंस सॉरी हाइपो टेंशन हाई इज कॉल्ड हाइपर एंड लो इज कॉल्ड हाइपो टेंशन सो दिस इज अबाउट योर ब्लड प्रेशर नेक्स्ट वी कैन सी दैट सिस्टोलिक एंड डायस्टोलिक प्रेशर्स समटाइम्स कॉज डिजर्डर्स मीन समटाइम्स द हाइएस्ट प्रेशर मे बी वन थर्टी और वन फोर्टी वेर आज द लोएस्ट प्रेशर इज सिक्सटी और सेवेंटी दिस इज ए डिजर्डर clear if this exists for long time means we will not control in time the blood pressure remains the cause for creating many diseases means it may affect the heart kidney liver etc as blood is supplied to all these parts clear students so next topic is our this is about your blood pressure you can see next is about uh, <clears throat> the different components of blood next topic is components of blood so what are the components of blood let's see components of blood so here the blood is consist of many components as rbc then your wbc then your platelets rbc is known as erythrocytes erythrocytes wbc known as leukocytes and platelets are known as thrombocytes so here these are the major components instead of these components there are some other components are found they are lymph and plasma so students now let's see what is the function of these components of blood clear so rbc gives the blood a red color as it has hemoglobin and due to hemoglobin it increases the binding affinity of oxygen then wbc or bc is called your leukocyte leukocyte helps in increasing the immunity it produces monocytes basophils eosinophils they are the other components of wbc which increases our immunity and fights against the disease causing microorganism next your platelets or thrombocytes which helps in the clotting of blood means when we have any injury and we will not cover, we will not cover that injured part then after some times there is a clot occurs the at the injured part means after some bleeding then the bleeding itself gets stop that is stopped due to platelets or thrombocytes by the mechanism that is called clotting or coagulation of blood we will explain it next is your lymph lymph is the major component of blood this is colorless like plasma this is colorless and viscous fluid viscous fluid means it can be transported to anywhere clear students and main subst main function is it carries different components it carries its main function is carries fats and another function is it forms lymphatic system it form lymphatic system this also help in increasing immunity and fights against disease causing microorganism and the next function it, it absorb the fat from the intestine third function it it absorb fat from the intestine fat from the intestine and drains it into the blood drains it into the blood so here i have told you different functions of lymph lymph is a colorless fluid like plasma it carries fats and other nutrients to different parts it forms the lymphatic system in which b lymphocyte and t lymphocytes are come b lymphocyte lymphocytes and t lymphocytes as you are in class 10 so i am telling you in short in higher classes we will study about in detail uh, three four pages you will study about lymph here in this class you just simply remember lymphatic system makes 
the immune system strong by forming B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. Next function is it absorbs fat from the intestine and drains it into the blood. Clear students? Then what is the function of thrombocytes? Here I have discussed. And plasma? Plasma constitutes the 90% of the fluid in the blood. Means 90% of blood is constituted by plasma. So plasma also help in carrying different substances in the blood to different parts of the body. And here I have told you about platelets or thrombocytes. How these thrombocytes helps in the clotting of blood? This question comes many times. What is the mechanism of clotting of blood? You can say that when we get injured, then this is actually the clotting of blood. Clotting of blood involves some cascade process, some cascade process. It means here continuous synthesis of enzymes and many proteins are used in the clotting, clotting or coagulation of blood. Means prothrombin, prothrombin, the mechanism is like this. The prothrombin get converted into thrombin. By the action of enzyme thrombokinase. Thrombokinase. As we know that thrombocyte, the other name of platelet is thrombocyte. So here, thrombin is not found in direct state in the blood. It is present in prothrombin. So to activate this prothrombin into thrombin, it needs the enzyme that is called thrombokinase. By the help of thrombokinase, it is get converted into thrombin and thrombin helps in the clotting of blood. Clear students? So next topic is your transportation in plants which we will study in the next class.